five is greater than X, but in reality, this should be read as X is less than five. You have to, you should be reading left to right. And the way to always remember this, there's a couple different ways. The way I was taught and still used to this day is that if you use your left hand and you make one of those symbols, your left hand is less than. So if you just read it from your own view, you can see, okay, hey, this is less than because it's in my left hand. So the L, left and less than. Um, and you can see here, if I make this shape with my L and you can do it too, if you're at home or if you're in the classroom, you make the shape with your left hand, this will be less than. And then down below, this would be Y is greater than 10. And there's not, there's not necessarily a way to remember the right side is greater, uh, just that left is less and the right is what's left is greater than. There's also another way to try to remember it. You can remember it with these points on this symbol. So less than is there's one dot. If you imagine some dots on these symbols, one dot is less than two. So if you read it from left to right, one is less than two, therefore it is less than. If you read this one left to right, two is greater than one, therefore this is the greater than symbol. Whichever one helps you remember easier or the best um, is totally up to you. Just some tips for remembering which symbol is which um, when you're trying to read some of these inequalities. Um, and that is all. Are there any questions before you get started on the Desmos activity again? Okay, I will go ahead and unpause the Desmos activity. Uh, please continue on slides two, three, and four, and let me know if you have any questions. Three, three, 13 is still less than 14. So we can clearly see that any number less than four, obviously if you try four, four plus 10 equals 14, 14 would equal 14, so we can't do four or anything higher than four. Um, so then that leads us to some of the other answers that we saw. Um, we saw 3.9 and lower. This is very similar to anything less than four. And then uh, we saw Henry, he put uh, zero, one, two, and three, which are all the um, integers that would be less than four. Um, now also keep in mind that as um, a few of you mentioned, 3.9, you know, 3.999999 repeated forever would technically be less than four. And so that would also work. Also, you could have one fourth, you could have, um, you know, some minuscule 0 0.000001 that would also work for X. Um, so all, all possible uh, answers a, a range of infinite possible answers that would actually fit 4x if you include decimals and fractions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open five and six, and please go ahead and move on to those slides. And please, again, let me know if you have any questions about slide four or any other slide, and I can go over that at any time. Stop sharing.
And again, I still see a few of you on that. We can see that uh, we have another inequality where three X is less than or equal to 24. And we have a scale here or a hanger that is demonstrating that visually. And so to the right, we have some possible solution sets or uh, possible solutions. Uh, and so we don't know which one we wanna pick initially. Um, so the best way to go ahead and figure this out is to treat this inequality just like you would an equation and solve for X. And so we see that we right now we have three times X is less than or equal to 24. So if we wanna get X by itself, we're gonna to have to divide by three, divide by three. And then we're gonna have X is less than or equal to 24 divided by three equals eight. And so out of our solutions, we can then pick the solution to our inequality. And then on to slide six, we would do the exact same thing. And we can see that they got 17 is greater than X, but there's a problem with it. Something is wrong about this particular solution that they plugged in. And so once you solve for X here by doing the, this, a very similar process, you have a couple extra things to do. So you have to minus 12 first and so on. But try and see if you can figure out what's wrong with this 17 is greater than X. Something's not quite right. And once you do find it, you'll be able to try it and come up with a correct answer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the rest of the slides for the Desmos activity. Um, again, if there are any questions about what I just showed for slides five and six, please let me know. I can go over that right now. Um, are there any questions on those slides? And if not, are there any questions on any slides at all? Can you just, oh, slide five. Okay, yep, Selena, got you. Um, do you want me to show slide six or you want me to just do slide five, Selena? Slide six, okay. All right, so very similar to the last question, we have this inequality here and we wanna get X by itself because we know eventually that's what they did over here. That was their first answer. Even if it's not perfectly right, it's really close. And so what we wanna do here is the same thing. We wanna get X by itself. So what we wanna do is to get X by itself on the right side with the minus 12 from both sides. So let's go ahead and minus 12. And we can look at it from this visual up here if you're looking top to bottom. And so if you got rid of this 12 and you minus 12 from 80, we would then have 68 is less than 4X. Oops. Uh oh, yeah, I clicked on something. There we go. And then from here, very similarly to the last slide, we have four times X. And so to get this by itself, we're gonna have to divide both sides by four. And then now we have X by itself on this side. So I'm just gonna write it over here. And then what is 68 divided by four? You can use a calculator. Um, I, I didn't know that off the top of my head. I kind of had to think about it for a second, um, but it is 17. And so right away, hopefully we can all see, this is the answer we should be getting. And what was the answer they were initially trying up here? It wasn't, it's a little different. And so if you try this one instead, you will have better luck. Yep, no problem, Selena. And so the rest of the slides are going to be very similar to this, where you're gonna to have to solve for X or whatever variable there is uh, to solve the inequality. No worries, Lena, I got you. <laughs> Okay, any other questions on any other slides? I will be happy to go over any slide if you're having trouble on it or if you have any questions.
If not, keep up the good work. Stand. And you can just type them in there. And then obviously add whatever numbers uh, you know to fit to make it true. But yeah, all these should be there on every one. Um, if there isn't one of these little keyboards on one of the decimal slides, please let me know, but they should be there. Did that help, Jawan? I see Arish is saying you can type equal next to the sign as well. Um, I have not tried that myself, but let's try that. Yeah. So if you type a greater than or less than symbol and then immediately after type an equal sign, it'll make it equal to or greater or greater than or equal to less than or equal to. You can also do that. Um, let me check Dan right now. And then I'll, I can also go over slide nine in a moment. Um, okay, yep. Uh, yeah, Dan, I'm gonna have something ready for everyone in about three minutes. Um, and then we'll all be working on something separate. So uh, I would say just hold on for a brief moment. Um, and then, yeah, slide nine. I'll quickly go over slide nine. And then at 125, we're going to do an exit ticket. So. Okay, and I'll share my screen. Okay, so for this slide, we have some parentheses with a multiplier on the outside of it. So there is an extra step that we have to do here. So if we, just for the beginning of this, we can always kind of ignore the inequality here and pretend it's like an equal sign and treat it the same, even though we know it's an inequality. Um, when you're, when you're you know, doing the steps to try and solve for the inequality, you can treat it like an equal sign, um, unless there's negative numbers and we can get into that later. Um, but for right now, we're not dealing with any multipliers of negative numbers. And so what we can do is we can start by dividing both sides by three. Because we can treat this parenthesis as if it's like an X or a Y or a five, because it's closed off, this three is being multiplied this to this whole thing. So if we divide by three in this whole thing, the threes cancel out and we're just left with this X plus four. But then also we have to keep in mind this 18 divided by three. So I'll start back up here. So if we cancel out these threes, we'll have X plus four. And that would equal 18 divided by three. And what's 18 divided by three? That is going to be six. Excuse me, sorry, I should not be writing equal sign. This is a greater than or equal sign. So it's greater than or equal to six. Then we wanna get X by itself again. We can then subtract four, subtract four, and we end up with these cancel out. So we end up with X is greater than or equal to six minus four, and this would be two. So whenever you see a parenthesis being multiplied by something and you have an equation or an inequality, you can always divide that side, both sides, you know, to keep things equal or in this case, unequal. Um, to cancel out that three and get it over. And we can see here 18 is divisible by three. So usually if the number is going to be divisible by it, it's a good sign that that's what you were supposed to do. Um, and I forget who asked for slide nine, but did that help? I hope that did. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing for the moment. Yes, like, yeah, so like Mrs. Aldis is saying, you can't solve on the inside first. Because it's, it wouldn't be, yes, backwards from PEMDAS. So parentheses, or no, the first, yeah, you'd start with the first to eliminate it. Yep. Oh, 
Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the Desmos activity for a moment because we're going to do an exit ticket. And so I will go ahead and share my screen one last time. That I had to sneeze. I don't, I'm okay. Okay. Okay, so this is an exit ticket. And so I'm gonna ask all of you to find the solution to this inequality. And once you find it, I want you to type into the chat using the following language, the solutions to the inequality are, and then you're going to uh, tell me what the solutions are. So if it's X is greater than 50 or X is greater than three, you would then tell me whatever the inequality should be um, for the solution. Okay. And if you are, I see a few people already putting answers into the chat. Uh, please use the following language to do that. So please put the solutions to the inequality R and then the answer. And that will fulfill the requirements. Awesome, Selena. Mm. Yes, Matthew, you did. Yep. And <clears throat> Mrs. Aldis, uh, uh, did you have anything for them before they head out for today? Yeah, um, I won't be here next week, um, but Mr. Kraft will be here and Ms. Madeira, who is in my classroom with some of you right now, will be um, in our Zoom with us. So have a great weekend and I will see you guys in a little over a week. Again, if you have not submitted a uh, answer in the chat, please do not leave. Make sure you do that before you head out of class today. Um, but once you do submit that, you are free to leave and I uh, won't see you until next week. So enjoy your weekend and I'll see you on Monday. Sorry.